This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Good morning. This is Relatively Speaking, the show all about you and your family. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. And Thanksgiving is upon us. Many of us have had like two years or more of missed traditions and family gatherings due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But now with vaccine rates rising, uh, many of us are trying to reboot the traditions. I want to remind us um, the pandemic's not over yet. So today, we'll talk about how to stay safe and calm and keep the holidays as stress-free as possible. Um, Yesterday, Java Chapman's here with me today. I'm excited. Um, We Unfortunately, Michelle's out, um, but we have Java here. And yesterday, I had the pleasure of being on a segment of Deep South Dive. Uh, dining with Malcolm White and Carol Puckett and Java. And we talked a little bit about how to make the holidays a little more stress-free. And I I thought today would be a really good time to expand on what we talked about. Java, I just love that show. Yeah, I I wanted to personally thank you for, um, you know, making some time for us on Monday. You know, you come to us every Tuesday. But it was, I felt it was important. And I know Malcolm and Carol enjoyed your conversation, uh, just talking about ways to overcome the stress that will come with the holidays, because as much as it is a joyous time, there is an extra level of stress with all of the preparation and kind of things that come with the season. It's almost unavoidable, but it's how we deal with the stress that makes us, you know, stronger and, and keeps us going during the season. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, we were talking about right before this show um, about the fact that um, many times cooking, if you do it in the right manner, can really help you calm some of that stress you feel. Um, We mentioned yesterday about sweet potatoes cooking in the oven. That sweet aroma. Oh, (laughs) that, that sweet aroma is so fine. And, you know, some people love the smell, I do, of cinnamons and apples cooking or um, citrusy smells with that cinnamon. So um, if you get into the moment and allow some of the cooking to to help you de-stress yourself, it really can. And we'll talk about that as um, as we go through. Um, I'll laugh. I would encourage anybody to go listen to the podcast from yesterday on Deep South Dining because um, there was also some fun um, and frenzy about uh, whether or not uh, sugar should go into cornbread. I thought that was fun. Yeah, that was a, that, that was a bit of a hot topic for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. And so, you know, as we're moving along and thinking about bringing family back, um, extended family, you know, uh, thinking about the different opinions that come in from something civil like sugar and cornbread, much less the political and the COVID and and all the other issues that have been going around. So um, I want us to talk about um, what what you do to try to de-stress yourself. How do you plan for the holidays? And, and I do want to talk a little bit about... How you manage um, when you know people are coming who have different political views, uh, different views about what's going on, or maybe that individual who is sometimes a troublemaker, but they're your family, so you feel obligated. How do you manage that, listeners? So we've got lots of fun stuff to talk about. Give us a call. Join the conversation whenever you're ready at one eight seven seven mpb ring That's one eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Or you can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. 
So, you know, the Thanksgiving, we'll talk specifically about Thanksgiving, but we can talk about any of the holidays as you're preparing. Um, The weekend is really a time for many family traditions. It's a busy travel season, fly season, drive season. It's one of the biggest times, and it's really exciting for some. But as Javin mentioned, a bit anxiety-provoking and and maybe even scary for others. So, you know, scary not just because of the pandemic and the fact that it's not over yet, but that and and obviously there's still adults and children who are vulnerable. But even though now many adults are vaccinated and receive boosters to add protection, um, even though we just started vaccinating those children, they're not protected yet. So they'll be getting their first vaccines now, their second in a couple of weeks. Then there, there'll need to be another two, three weeks before we have the full protection. So some could, if they move forward pretty quickly, um, go ahead and get there with their immunity by Christmas. So we still need to remember about protective factors, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, Dr. Butchers, we have our first um, caller this morning, and uh, it's Stephen from Boonville. Oh, good. Hi, Stephen. Thanks for calling early. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to, to share the thought of, of the cooking uh, part of it with the Thanksgiving meal because I, I spent a lot of my uh, adult years in restaurant work and, and food service of different kinds. But what I, I also learned uh, to cook at an early age when my mother had uh, passed away when I was 16 years old, so I, mm-hmm. I uh, got in the kitchen a good bit. Mm-hmm. But what I found was that, um, in a sense, it can be, I, I love to get in on a Thanksgiving morning and, and do the big heavy stuff, with working with the turkey and everything. My wife uh, works with the casseroles and the potatoes and stuff. Mm-hmm. But what I, the, what I, the way it makes me feel when I'm in there when, when it's something, not just enjoying doing something like that, but as I'm cooking a meal and putting things together like that, I'm thinking about the people I'm doing it for and remembering the things I've heard them say they like. And to me, cooking a meal like that can be one of the most intimate, unselfish things a person can do to sacrifice their time over that stove, doing whatever they're doing, in, in the very intention of doing it because that person that they're thinking about likes it that way. It's just an intimate act to me to cook a meal for someone else. And I have always loved that thought on Thanksgiving Day, to to get in there and really make the effort to do that. Oh, that's beautiful, Stephen. I I think you're exactly right. It is a service for others. I know. Now, for some people, if if they have difficulty standing and taking care of that, certainly understand why they sometimes feel the need to go out to eat or to to order the food. But but you're exactly right, and I I feel a lot of that as I. As I cook for my family, I just love being in the kitchen, and and I, I it is it is giving a gift. Java, wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, Stephen was very eloquent with uh, uh, you know conveying that message because it is an act of service. You're being mm-hmm. very thoughtful, like he said, preparing certain dishes the way that he knows that a certain person mm-hmm. likes it, you know, because sometimes uh, with in the chef world, it can be, this is how I'm going to cook it, and this is how you're going to eat it. Right, right. <laughs> but he's being very mindful yeah. and thinking of others, and that that is beautiful. And, uh, you know, it's cliche, but, you know, the reason for the season, being yeah. thankful and showing gratitude to others. Yeah, yeah. Stephen, um, as a chef, I'm, I'm curious. Now, you, you said you are a chef professionally? Well, no, I didn't reach that level of chef, but I've spent a lot of time as, as head cooks and, and restaurant management for right. years. Right, which is a big deal. I think Java's point is a really good one, though. Um, 
you I, I know that that there are some professional chefs who who truly it's it's their way or the highway and um but but to be mindful of how other people enjoy um their food the way they do I think is really important this time of year yeah. right and that is there is a big difference in in doing it at home and doing it in a restaurant simply because when you're doing it in a restaurant they want you to do it the same way every time no mm-hmm. matter what but at home you have the freedom to put your love into it a lot of TLC and that's what's so enjoyable about it yeah yeah, that sounds awesome. Thanks for calling, Stephen. That was a great start off um, as we're talking about the holidays and preparing and and how we can put joy into it and try to do away with the anxiety. So we're going to take our first break. And when we come back, we'll keep talking about maybe some of those traditions. What have you done? What have you done to put the joy into it? What is your planning and how do you approach the holidays? Or do you organize for them? Do you really try to plan ahead? Give us a call, one eight seven seven mpb ring That's 877-672-7464. This is Relatively Speaking. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ryder Taff, Portfolio Manager at New Perspectives, a fee-only financial advisory and co-host of Money Talks. Each week, we take your personal finance questions and tell you about a money topic we hope you find helpful. Money Talks can be heard Tuesdays at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio. Podcasts can be found on our website, money.mpbonline.org, or on your smart device's podcasting platform. Welcome back, and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress here with Java Chapman, and we are talking about preparing for the holidays, Thanksgiving really particularly right now, um, gathering with friends, um, maybe, and family, likely, more so than we have in the last couple of years. Now, keeping in mind the pandemic's not over, um, there are still issues, but I wanted to talk a few minutes about how we can prepare for that and make things a little bit safer. Obviously, vaccination is definitely one of those issues, but there are some other things that we could do to to try to remain safe as we're gathering, and we'll talk about that. But I also want to talk about um, the, the incredible... Um, ability that we have to make Thanksgiving something very special with the cooking and the aromas and the gathering and the calmness, if, if you approach it right. So, you know, talked about the scary because pandemic's not over, but also scary for some of those of us who... The reality of it is that maybe quarantining wasn't that big of a hardship because you're kind of an introvert and you like staying by yourself. And so maybe it's easier to just do things with one or two people. And so, you know, we can talk about that. How how can you make yourself stretch back out now that you've been so used to being alone? So um, I know we have a couple of callers in uh, Java. Who's next? Yeah, let's go to uh, Tennessee. We have uh, Dan on the line wants to uh, talk about Thanksgiving. Great. Hi, Dan. Hey, hey, good morning, ma'am. Uh, hey, this should segue right right perfectly into what you're just commenting about. I've lived alone for years. I just live out in the country, you know, farmhouse and stuff, and I just don't get out much to meet anybody. But I've lived alone for years. always had dogs, so every Thanksgiving I uh, – Took a big turkey, a bunch of vegetables, and all kinds of good stuff. And uh, me and the dogs hang out in the kitchen. I got one. He's 14. He likes to lay by the oven the whole time. And when it's all cooked in the afternoon, we all sit down and have a feast. <laughs> so, I'll make the best of it. We have a good time. Huh? So that's one time they get really spoiled, I think. Wow. What lucky dogs you have. Well, they're your family, rather. 
they're your family yeah, yeah. gathering. I, I used to, you know, when I a long time ago, I cooked for the family and all that. You know, when I had family around, I, I was a cook for everybody. But it's it's enjoyable. It's nice to be able to cook for folks. And now I just cook for the dogs. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a I uh, well, comment about apple cinnamon you was talking about, I, a realtor a long time ago, a couple of them told me that when you're showing your house, if you have an apple cinnamon candle burning, it'll make it feel like home. And people come in, they'll smell that, and it'll feel like home. You sell your house quicker. <laughs> Absolutely right. That Those aromas do make it feel, to some people, and for me particularly, um, oh, yeah, yeah. So you're right. Uh, I think realtors uh, know know that well. I'd love to hear from one on uh, what aromas seem to sell a house better, but but um, I've certainly read that. So Dan, I do I do have a, a quick question. Is is it that you made the choice just to 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 be that loner? Um, or is it that you've had loss and haven't had replacement um, in your in your family and friends? Loss and replacement. Mm-hmm. I just kind of stay busy out in the country, you know, doing my chores and stuff. I just maybe go to town once a month to get supplies. I just don't take time to see anybody kind of shy. I must speak to people and things. But, no, it's just... Just me, just how it goes. Good Lord has a plan for me, and I just keep taking away. So yeah, well, so. like I said, you have very lucky dogs, but it might be good for you, Dan, to reach out and um, just tap somebody on the shoulder and let them be lucky to share a meal with you. Because I can be certain that there is someone out there who who also is spending the day. Um, without others. Now, you don't sound like a really lonely person, more alone, and that's good. And I love the laugh in your voice. So um, thanks for thanks for sharing that, Dan. I've, I've been blessed. I've had a good life. I can't complain. So, yeah, it's all good. And uh, I don't really know many people around here, so it just it'd be all right. And the good Lord has a plan. It's all good. So make the best every day, and I do spoil my dogs on Thanksgiving. So you have a wonderful day. <laughs> you too, Dan. Thanks so much for calling. All right, we're going to stay in the phones. We're going to go on to Mikey and Mobile. Hi, Mikey. Hey, good morning. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of like Dan. I'm not going to be doing, you know, the you know the. This stuff has changed in my life, but I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, my dogs love me very much, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, but my, my, what my hint, is, <laughs> if you can call it that, is coming from um, years of experience and dealing with kids and being with kids and, and family and stuff. It, but later on, becoming a harmonica player myself, um, and a harmonica being a very, it's a, it's a, people don't think of it as an instrument, but it is. Oh, yeah. And a, But it's a very affordable thing if you go and get like the birthday harmonicas, mm-hmm. you know, packets. When you got kids in the car and, you know, it's like um, you got that little packet of harmonicas and you, you put it inside a, a coffee can with a lid on it. And you wait till you get where you got to stop somewhere and let them let off some steam. You understand where I'm going, right? And that sounds <laughs> that sounds like fun, Mikey. And so I think you're just giving some hints on how to maybe make the the Thanksgiving holidays a little bit um, happier or more fun. I'll tell you. And um, well, I mean, you, the grown-ups can play harmonica sh- too. Sure. Now. Come oh, on, yeah. you know. Oh, like yeah. a, and uh, and the thing about harmonica that's unique among other instruments is that it's the only one that you play on both the intake and the exhale. Uh huh. So it's really mm-hmm. good for the breathing stuff too. Yeah, good points. Okay, I'm just going to make a point here um, with again with trying to stay safe. If you'd want to make sure with the harmonica, you have individual harmonicas and um, no no sharing. Um, yeah, I didn't think right about now. that one, Doctor Bushes, because yeah, it's, it's a lot of breathing going on. With that, <laughs> a lot with of the, breathing in and out. <laughs> now, something we have done, my family has done, uh, and it's become a real tradition uh, during the Christmas holidays. Is we sing Christmas songs and we collect little um, music instruments. Um, 
uh, tambourines, uh, maracas, uh, sticks, little drums, and hand them out, bells, um, other other musical instruments, and let everybody play along. So it's a fun, the, when the grandkids come, they all love that piece of it. And it does um, let some sharing happen without... You know, really worrying about talking about some of the things that always incite argument, like um, I've already mentioned a couple of things. Um, I won't even go into it. We all know what they are. So um, thanks for that, Mikey. That was a, a good little reminder for me to bring that tradition out. It's a it's a good one. And music is good for the soul. You know, when we were talking on... Um, Deep South Dining, we were talking about um, using all of your brain and not just part of your brain. Um, Cooking can be a right brain or a left brain uh, skill because if you are one of those cooks, who's throwing things into the pot, like I am sometimes, um, and you don't measure anything, um, and you're being creative and doing something a little bit different, that's your right brain. That's what um, artists get hard into sometimes. But also, left brain, another big part uh, can happen with cooking. Bakers have to use that left brain because um, you've got to measure correctly. You've got to get those the the right amount of baking soda and baking powder and flour and salt and all of that, and you know, knead it to the the right perfection. Um, all of that is partly coming from the left brain. So if you're cooking, um, again, it's so good for you. So back to our first caller, doing it out of love, but also um, doing it for the good of your own self. It can be calming and meditative and and helpful for you. So with that, I'm going to go back to the phones. Who do we have, Java? Uh, we have another uh, good friend of all of our shows, Sue in Beaumont. Oh, good. Hi, Sue. Thanks for calling. Hey, how are you? Good. <laughs> yeah, I want you to fix me up with Dan there that's cooking for his dogs. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a matchmaker show, Sue. <laughs> well, with Dan, because uh, my, my oven is broken, and so I don't have, I don't have, I live by myself. I don't have any place to make it cook a big turkey or anything, so I'm feeling kind of bereft. But uh, I, I, if he's cooking for his dogs, Dan, I'd, I'd love for you to invite me to eat with you so <laughs> oh i love it i love it uh, Java, can, can this be not be a matchmaker show i mean i don't know if dan calls back <laughs> <laughs> you can give him my phone number you got my number on your your caller id i think or whatever but uh dan i i need you to come down here either cook cook for me or or, or let me go and help you cook or something because it's it's, it's lonely on thanks that's the most lonely holiday to me is thanksgiving yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. So um, thank you for that. And um, Java, I'm going to talk Java into matchmaking if Dan calls back. OK. But Sue but, did bring the good point about, she did. Uh, you know, making those kind of connections on Thanksgiving like it's one of those holidays. Right. Just. Yeah, exactly. So to reach out and Sue, honestly, I think I would encourage you to reach out to to someone or if someone out there knows Sue to reach out to her because it can be very lonely during a holiday um, time, especially if you've lost someone you care about or if you're feeling isolated. So listeners out there who um, who do have something going on and have it in your heart to reach out to those who are perhaps lonely, do it. It can, it can be um, so rewarding and, and make you feel like you're giving back something for what you've gotten. So I would encourage you to do that. Okay. Um, we're going to go to our next break. 
Um, I think we have a caller coming in right now. I and, think it's Dan. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we are, we'll continue talking about the holidays and taking care of family, friends, preparing, getting over the anxiety, and we're going to continue to talk about doing that. Give us a call at 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. You can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. This is Relatively Speaking. We'll be right back. A contractor ever tell you the price of something and it sounds so high you think, eh, maybe I'll try it myself. Some jobs just aren't that difficult, and yes, you can do it. If you want to find out how to do those things, listen to Fix It 101, podcast everywhere. Welcome back, and thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress here with Java Chapman, and we are talking about the holidays, particularly planning for Thanksgiving so how are you planning ahead? Listeners, do you have some tips for us on how you organize and keep Thanksgiving stress-free? Um, if you do, share, share with us. So do you sometimes wonder what to do if there's one relative who always seems to disrupt things? What about um, how, do you, how do you handle that? Um, different political views or social views or or even root for different um, football teams. Sometimes that can get pretty hot, right, Java? Just for, like, we know, I'm just going to say Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob, you don't watch football. You're just trying to create a ruckus. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Just to create a ruckus. So, you know, sometimes that can be fun, but sometimes it can can sort of overflow into more than that. So trying to keep a handle on that um, is, is really important during the holidays. So I would encourage our listeners to think about keeping conversation light, um, talking about current events is fine, but sometimes just learning more about each other. Talk about people. Talk about how their families are doing. Ask them about their travels. Talk about things that you may not know. We have been all embroiled in so much news and so much negative. I would encourage all of our listeners to think about Turning, turning the conversations to positive. Um, another thought is, um, speaking of getting your brain occupied, come up with something fun to do. Uh, we talked about music before the break, um, having a little band and a sing-along. That would be fun. But what about games, card playing? Uh, a lot of families do a lot of fun card playing. Um, or um, organize a big Monopoly game. I know my my kids um, love to play Monopoly, and, and that is something that could become a tradition during the holidays. Sometimes it might be easier this year, just think about it, to try to organize something that will occupy everybody, everybody's mind, allow them to have a fun um, interactive game or interactive sing-along, and try not to talk about too many heavy things. I think it would be good for all of us to think about more positive so, listeners, if, if you are one of those people who know how to plan that kind of thing, give us a call. We'd love to hear, hear from you. That number is 1-877-MPB-RING, 877-672-7464. Um, I thought just for a minute, if you will bear with me, because I am a physician and I do want to remind everybody to try to work to stay safe and well. Um, obviously, like I said earlier, vaccination is the, the best way to protect from COVID-19 and the flu. Um, but, you know, there are other viruses that are going around, too. And so we want to be just mindful and careful. So let me tell you some things that we know work. Um, one, good hand washing. 
um, two, not not sharing drinks or utensils, um, making sure that there's space. Um, having a very crowded room is not a good idea. Having open ventilation. If you happen to be lucky enough to have purchased a HEPA filter or can, um, having a filter an air um, filter in your home to to try to keep the air clean. Open your windows. Open your doors if the weather lends itself, which it may in the south. We, we are lucky enough to be able to often um, have weather that's warm enough. So so try to keep that in mind, having outdoor activities when you can. All of that um, lessens the possibility of transmission of airborne um, viruses. And that's what COVID-19 is. That's what the flu virus is. Um, and that's what many of the um, the cold viruses are. So so keep that in mind um, to, to try to, to keep, keep everyone safe. So... Uh, as we as we move along, just trying to help yourself. Um, if you're itching, and I, I know there are many people out there who are just itching to have a gathering right now, um, then there are ways that you can do it to to keep it as safe as you can. So I mentioned those. Um, it, but if you have other thoughts or questions about it, certainly do give us a call. Um, but let's move on to planning. Um, how how can you make Thanksgiving a little less stressful? Well, there are some things that you can do ahead of time. Um, for meals. Plan ahead. Make yourself start now. That's why I decided to do the show today rather than uh, next week, because we're, we're, we have enough time to go out and go ahead and buy those staples in the you know shelf that have a long shelf life that you know you're going to be using. Why do you need to wait until the week of Thanksgiving? Don't do that. For some people, it's fun. Oh, some people like that. They we, like going to the grocery store when it's jam packed. <laughs> well, then I guess you could do that. But again, is that something you like to do, Java? Not, not really. But I remember um, before last, before yesterday's show, um, we talked uh, about the theater of Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. And those that's one of the, you know, one of the things the last minute grocery s- store uh trip, you uh-huh. know, that's one of the theaters. <laughs> I like that. Well, and and it it can be sort of a tradition to to do the the production piece where you get your list and you get up early on Wednesday morning and you you run out and you gather everything. As it's great it's great. I could see Malcolm White um, enjoying the theater of that. Yeah, right? the theater of thanks of the um, holidays. Of the holidays, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> um, but if you're one of those people who get really stressed by it, then planning ahead um, can can help with some of that de de stressing. So I'd love to hear if some people think it's it's the way to do it is that theater. Um, I'd love I'm sure there's a good story out there about that. But to make yourself sit down, write out a list, um, a good, you know, a good list is always helpful. Having that that notebook where you just write down and check off so you don't forget something um, that helps you organize better. Um, it's OK to ask for help. If you know that there's a family member out there, I have a sister who makes the best sweet potatoes ever. And so. We just ask her to make the sweet potatoes every time instead of learning how to make them as good as as hers are. So, you know, ask for help. Ask somebody to, to bring a dessert or bring something if you're having a crew come in. Don't be the martyr. Don't let yourself think that you're going to prove something to somebody 
um, that that you're the best. Um, this is not a competition. This should be a family gathering. Remember what the gathering is about. It is about gathering together and and being a family or being a group of friends or doing something for somebody, as our first caller said. You know, think of it as as that, but don't strive for it being perfect. Um, I think so many times people worry about having to redecorate the house to be able to people don't notice that when you go into a dinner java is the first thing you notice whether or not um they have new furniture that's that that's not the intention of the night right yeah right (laughs) so it's it's all about going in and enjoying like we've talked about the aromas um Enjoying the company, enjoying the gathering, savoring what's going on. So don't strive for perfection. Just strive for a good, happy gathering. Um, So um, I think I would love to hear from others out there about how, how they how they gather what do they do do you already have all your recipes picked out do you make the same things over and over again and there's no recipe Um, have you already gotten your turkey or do you not do a turkey and if you don't don't why not Um, it does seem like there's been some concern out there about there not being enough and um, there is something that's going on that I would like to caution people against um, like happened at the beginning of the pandemic a couple of years ago. With um, the toilet paper? Yeah. <laughs> People were buying up all the toilet paper like they were going to use 50 rolls in a week, right? Um, and I hear some of the same thing is is starting to happen with individuals buying supplies, food supplies for cooking. Don't do that. That is such a selfish act. Buy what you need. I think it's fine to have a full pantry, but when you start overfilling because just because you can, put someone else in a negative position. So Because I know if I go to the grocery store and somebody's taking all of the canned cranberry sauce, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you need to leave leave a can on the shelf for Java Chapman. <laughs> leave a can. Did you all hear that? So I know I know it's going on, and I I just think that um, something has happened to us in our society that we are becoming a little bit too selfish and a little bit too self centered, and we need to start working hard to think about our fellow man. Think about Java. Who needs that canned cranberry sauce? I need to see my rings but on my Thanksgiving just, table. You just need one can, right? <laughs> that's it. Um, that's <laughs> it. So with that, I think we'll go to break. We have plenty of time for callers, though, and I want you to join in. What do you think about people hoarding um, large amounts of food or products during this time? Um, give us a call, one eight seven seven mpb ring That's 877-672-7464. You can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. This is Relatively Speaking. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for listening and staying with us. We're talking about preparing for Thanksgiving and making it right. Not making it perfect, but making it something that is happy and calm and something that allows you to enjoy the day or the weekend and and not dread it. So we've given you some tips, and we're going to keep on doing that. But we're going to go back to the phones right now. We have Daniel from the coast. Hi, Dan. Hey, how you doing, Mama? I am doing (laughs) fine. (laughs) Man, I would like to vote you in office for Mississippi. Mississippi, there's your magnolia right there. 
she can make the difference in Mississippi just like the governor over there in Alabama. Oh. She needs the mothers to come alive here. But look, <laughs> I'm ready for my Cajun fried turkey. I'm ready. Oh, talk I'm to us to about it. it. Oh, Lord, you know, you got to. You got to let it season for about three or four days. Put that Cajun season in there, inject that season in, then let that butter just drip on and let it just sit there for about a day or two. You know, let it melt on there and then sit it, sit it in that fridge for about a day or two and then slow cook it in that oven. Now, oh, unless you're one of them people that going to put it on that grill and just let it smoke. Oh, Lord, now you're talking. But I put mine in the oven. I put that some more butter on it. I put some olive oil to get that crisp and a little coconut oil. And, man, and then I bless it. And I say, thank you. Thank you, Father, for this thing. But I heard you talking about the hoarder situation and how people have gotten a little bit selfish. I, I think, you know, I think within the last few years, we've, because we've had some, I'm not going to mention names, but we had some leaders that kind of, you know, I'm, you know me, I'm a Democrat and a Republican. I'm both. This way I don't have no argument for either or. But we, we've, we've gotten to a time that if it wasn't for disasters, we would never be together. You know, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. we think about it, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, I feel that as I, as I talk to a couple of my friends from different cultures, they, they agree with me. They say, you know, we, as, as we learn to be a state that believes in, in God and, and family, we need to push that issue and, and not get so much caught up in the conflict and everything. We need to make a, what is it called, a Mississippi recipe for Thanksgiving. Yeah, oh, I like it. You know, we need to, we know the past. And we, we and a lot of people say they want to get rid of the past so people don't have to hear that no more. Listen, the reason why we listen to the past is so we don't make the mistakes in the future. That's the reason. So we're going to get away from that. We're going we gonna to let the kids know, hey, things were messed up, but we came through it. Right. We came through because there was a lot of people here in Mississippi that believe in that recipe of Thanksgiving. So that's why I'm going to call it the Mississippi Thanksgiving. I like now, it. This is the key for us to grow and be a great state for America. I like it. Well said. Thank you so much. The Mississippi recipe for happiness. I like it. So we all need to work on that. I I couldn't say it better. Thank you for those words. Um, You know, during the break, um, I want to bring something up in the last few minutes that um, Java brought up during the break and that is the trap of nostalgia and i i I want us to talk a little bit about that um, because that can be something that can interfere with developing good new traditions Um, java how did you put it well, yeah, the the trap of nostalgia. You just try. Everybody has, hopefully, everybody has a you know some fun memories from the holidays, mm-hmm. and you kind of try to recreate them, especially when family members have passed on or you know things like that. You know, you may say, "Well, Nana used to always do this for us on Thanksgiving, so I'm going to try to do it." But it doesn't turn out quite right. right. So now you're feeling bad. You know, Nana's passed away. You may have some un you know unpacked trauma or something like that. And it just kind of brings those uh, feelings up to the to the top. And like you were suggesting in the break, um, create new memories. Right. Don't don't get caught in that trap of nostalgia. Nostalgia trying to recreate. Do something new and make your own uh, memories. Yeah, and you can do. You honestly can use bits and pieces of the past. But to think that it will always stay exactly the, the, the same is, is just wrong. You know, when I was young, um, some of my fondest memories were, were the Thanksgiving and, and the Christmas gatherings. And we'd sit all around in the living room in which I now have. I live in my grandparents' home. And um, we would all sit around and my grandfather would hand out 
his gifts. Well, um, for a while, my family was trying to continue that tradition. Well, it's too much. It's too crowded. There are too many. You know, we we were eight, um, so that's grown um, into a humongous group just with my immediate family, much less all my cousins. So, you know, we had to morph it into something very, very different, though we keep their memories. Um, we keep those memories alive and remember them. But sometimes some of our relatives, we had to change that with them kicking and screaming and tugging. Yeah, because um, like you say, yeah. with the family, you have those people who are, you know, who are trying to hold on to their tradition, rightfully so, but it is a new day and time to, you know, switch things up. And you got to think about it, too, especially for the kids, as you know, you may have had these memories from when you were a kid. If you have little ones in your family, you know, you have to think about you're making their very own memories. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be your a carbon copy of your memories. Yeah. You know, make your own traditions. Yeah, I'll I'll add one more thing to that. I have I have so many, you know, I've lived a lot of life and I have a big family, but one of my one one thing that I did wrong in my early adulthood with my young children was um we tried to continue to always be at my mom's and dad's for Christmas, and we always we tried to also always be at my in laws to visit with them because they were close enough, and we were harried, and finally um, we put the brakes on and said, "Nope, we're not doing that anymore. We're gonna, as you said, create our own tradition. We um, established something probably pretty far down the line. One of my children would call in if they had time, but they don't, so that's good." Um, but it it did, you know, it, it was one of those realizations, um, why are we so tired? So do your own traditions, make your family happy by making sure that you're doing what is pleasing to everyone. And, and then, you know, plan ahead. If you're one of those who likes the frenziness of that late shopping, fine. I hope you can find everything you need. Um, those of you who, who like to stock up, stock up with what you need. Don't hoard. And go ahead and make that list and pre-prepare some of what you can do because one way that you can avoid being completely exhausted on these holidays is to have things pre-made. Do what you can do. Put it in your freezer if you can. And then I'm going to remind you one more time. Ask for help. Don't think you have to be the only one who does anything. And engage, by the way, children. It's good for them to be able to participate. That's how you make an individual with a caring, loving work ethic. So I would encourage you to do that. All right. Well, thanks for being with us this week. Thank you, Java. Thank you, callers and listeners. And, um... If you'd like to hear the show again or any past episodes, you can listen to the podcast on your favorite podcast app by searching Southern Remedy Relatively Speaking. This show is a production of MPB Think Radio and engineered by Java today. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. I ho- he also was a call screener, by the way. He multitasked. I hope you'll join us next Tuesday at 11 for Relatively Speaking. And stay tuned for NPR's Here and Now, coming up next on MPB Think Radio.